Crazy Joe, but now they can call me Batman. What up? Welcome back to the Necro Zoo. I am Bones. And in this one, we're going to go ahead and start taking a look at the Endless Winter Wave Collect to Build Frost King. Now, these are from McFarland Toys from the DC Multiverse line. And I know I'm late to the party with these, but I am going to do something a little bit different, which is that we'll take a look at the original release and then we'll take a look at the custom that I have done. Now, this time it is going to be Black Adam. Now, I know people were not a really big fan of this figure. They said that the face scope was horrendous. He looked like some kind of uh, creepy Eddie Munster. Uh, they didn't like some details on the figure. Uh, he, he has no cape and various other little details. So I went ahead and did a little bit of custom work. But first, let's check out the original release. Now, he does look pretty magical in the packaging. But let's go ahead and take a closer look at it. But first, he does come with your standard black DC Multiverse stand. Not needed, but sometimes useful. He also comes with his data fall card. On the front there, we do have some figure photography. Although it does look a bit rendered, there's like slight differences in this and the actual figure. But on the back, you do have some information. He also does come with some accessories. He comes with two energy effects. Now these do go on his fist and they are a transparent blue. These actually might go well with the new Static Shock that's coming out, but always nice to get some effects. And of course he does come with the legs of the Frost King. We'll save these until we are ready to build the figure. So let's go ahead and take a look at them. Now in the original release, uh, it is the same body book as the King Shazam, the infected one. Uh, I really like it. It kind of gives me that uh, solar Superman kind of aesthetic a little bit. He has a good body type between the wide shoulders and the thin waist and the muscularity. I just think they could have executed it with a little bit more attention to detail. But it is what it is. It is a figure that we had not received, Black Adam. And all in all, looks like a decent figure. Let's take a look at the head. Now, of course, there's the infamous Eddie Munster <laughs> head sculpt that nobody liked. I see a couple of little details that I can adjust here. Now, one thing a lot of people complained about was that he didn't have the pointy ears. Now, I'm not so sure because a lot of recent comic book images of Black Adam, he does not have the pointy ears. But it is something that people that have a general knowledge of the comic books would think that he comes with. So that is lacking a little bit there. Now, the way they also did a lot of the hairline and the sideburns is a little bit off. So that's something I did not like. And then, although it does have blue in the hair, like streaks, it's just I think they overdid it a little bit. It just uh, is a little bit too much accent color there. So all in all, not really the best head sculpt there. As far as articulation in the head, he cannot look up at all. Now this one is different because the, the neck is not attached to the body. It's a different piece which actually gives you more range in the head, which I actually like. But the big turnoff is that they are completely different colors. The neck is more of a pinkish skin and the head is more of a zombie white. So that's really throwing me off. He could look down rather well though. Some right action, some left action, and you could cock his head for some attitude so all in all not the best head scope but it is what they gave us so we'll move on going down he has that pretty sweet thunderbolt symbol i like the way it like transfers from white on top down into a little bit of frost blue 
at the bottom. It just gives it a little bit of more style. Pretty nice. Now, I do not like the bronze kind of plastic that they used for the, the gauntlets and the, the chest piece because it just looks like a dull bronze plastic. It, it should be a little bit more gold, but it is what it is. But let's take a look at his articulation at the waist. He has right to left, the full range of motion of the waist. You can twist them and get them in some pretty nice poses. He does have a lower waist articulation and then a chest articulation. Not really any crunch forward, but he could lean back really nicely for some flying poses. Okay, down we got a pretty nice belt and this is comic accurate, but it is that dull color. Thigh swivel, a lot of range there in the legs. Nice movement. We do not need a thigh cut there. He can kick up pretty nicely. And he can kick back really far. Now, this is the trunks that are rubber that allow for this movement in the legs. You can cock it out. He has that awesome hip swivel. Double jointed knees, not the prettiest. Straighten it out. You have up and down at the ankle. Now you can really push it because the the rubber around here is really soft, but it's really hard to get a lot of range there. You have right to left, rocker, and toe articulation. Before we go, let's take a look at the whole lower body. Really love the design, the 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 sculpt work in the suit. It's, it has like a little bit of gloss and then a little bit of flat black to separate it. One thing to note is that the knees and the elbows are a really dull plastic and the rest of the suit is kind of glossy. So I will be hitting that with some sealer. That way it'll get, it'll match a little bit more the gloss. And it won't, won't look so, you know, distracting when you actually look at it. Taking a look at the shoulder. He does have a really nice butterfly joint where it moves up and down and then front to back. Bicep swivel. Some nice double jointed elbows. Moving down into the gauntlets. Like I say, I do not like that color. It just does not give it any life, any pop at all. And then the fist actually fit really nice with this body. Sometimes these fists that they use it were like the infected fist or the bizarro fist, they look really big and these actually fit this guy really well. Taking a look at the legs before we go. Love all the scope work, love the boots. The boots have really nice detail. They are comic accurate. I just did not appreciate the color of them, but the scope work is there and the attention to detail is just phenomenal. Taking a look at from the bottom, no tread, no markings. Moving up the back. Now, this is what I'm talking about. I re just really love, like, the body shape that this guy has. Really aesthetic, so I really like that. Texture in the whole suit, which is nice. Even hidden little thunderbolts and stuff that you can't see right away. So, this is, you know, really a, a figure that could be great. They just did not do it right. So, now when I did the repaint, I did have my... DC Universe Classics Black Adam for reference and inspiration. Now, I kind of at first wanted to go with that yellow motif on this one, but then I thought uh, it kind of takes some way out of the box of, of what he was really meant to look like. It's not like a, a skin tight, uh, you know, leotard's costume. It's more like a, this one has more like a kind of armored textured feel. So we just stayed with the gold. Now what I did do is I hit it with some really shiny gold completely. So anywhere that he had gold on the gauntlets, the belt, the chest armor, I just hit it with that really nice gold just to give him some pop. Now, even on the back where it had that, that piece across his back that they didn't paint, I actually painted it in. So now it looks really good. The boots really pop now that they have that high color. 
and actually he looks really good now really happy with it now then i got into the head now this was i had to rethink the whole thing i had to pop it off and put his head on a stick and start working on him now what i wanted to do first was give him the pointy ears that everybody thought he should have now i'm not going to say where i got the piece but it is a piece in the multiverse line and i cut his ears and matched them and then heated it up and smoothed it out so it could like blend in uh, has a little bit of flaws in it but just for doing it off the cuff i really think it came out looking really well then i started on matching up the skin tones i did the neck and the fists and then sealed those to not get any paint rub and then i started on the head with the same paint that way it would match a little bit more so i took a lot of that raccoon eyes that he had and just dulled it down also he had a really bad case of the side eye going on so i had to fix his eyes it's just preferable to have them like this because eventually i will get another one of these in the original form so it's not a big deal i will have one on the shelf that has no alterations so i fixed the side eye did the ears started matching the paint a little bit more from the neck to the face and then i you know fixed around the eyes just to make him look a little bit I just wanted to turn the dial down a little bit on his, you know, the coloring of his face. And actually it came out really well. I was really happy with the results. I even did, uh, touched in the eyebrows a little bit and made them a little bit more pointy at the, at the corners. And then I got into touching up the hair, which like I said, was a lot of blue. I think they kind of overdid it, but I did add some satin black around the ears, touch in any spots that I missed just tightened up the line you know around his hairline the widow's peak you know shouldn't be so predominant and i just ha was able to blend it in did some work around the sideburns really happy with it finally when it was all said and done i think i got all the details i wanted to get in in there now i did mod the neck by popping off the head and drilling a hole in there now you do have to be careful with the guard on the back of his neck, but if you could squeeze the head in there, he can actually look way up now. Pretty cool. And of course the other thing was he had no cape. Now this guy had no cape and nobody had a problem with it. I love this figure. The, the, the original DC Universe Classics is probably my favorite line ever, but I did have to dig down and make him a custom cape. Now I did get this cape because I had an extra one lying around from the Wonder Woman from the last night on Earth. I had disassembled her and this cape was just laying around and it kind of fit perfectly because it has the hood and it's kind of tattered in the back. All I had to do was paint it black and then give it some gold trim. Came out looking really nice. Now then I just needed these, you know, kind of like the circles that hold this cape in. I just cobbled some together for now, but eventually I can cut this when I find what I really want to use. The kind of more like a flower looking, you know, little more like a clasp, you know, but this will work for now. You do slip this over his shoulders and the claps sit right on his chest and then the cape sits right over his shoulders. So I thought that was really nice. It looks really good slight from a little bit of touch-ups that I want to do I mean this is perfect custom work here from me now you can add the energy effects to make it a little bit more interesting but I'm all in all really happy with the custom work now I'm really happy to get into the endless winter wave what I am gonna do is I'm gonna do all of them I'm gonna do the Jon Stewart the Wonder Woman the Batman and even Aquaman and I'm gonna do a custom of each one when i review it so be looking forward to that you guys keep hunting out there keep collecting keep customizing and i will see you on the next one